Can I make a deep dish Chicago style pizza in my home kitchen? If you're new here, my name's Matt. In this series, we've been trying to make the perfect slice of pizza in our home kitchen. Today's gonna be a little bit more of a challenging episode because you don't really get a slice. I guess you do get a slice. It's a different style of pizza that we're making. We're gonna make Chicago deep dish style pizza. This is controversial. Some people don't even consider it pizza. They say it's just a casserole. I've been to Chicago. I can tell you regardless of if you think it's pizza, if you think it's not pizza, it's delicious. I don't really know how to make this, so let's jump on the internet and get some inspiration. It's basically an inverted pizza. You've got the dough on the bottom, and then your cheese and your fillings, or your toppings, really not called toppings if they're inside the pizza. Sauce on top. I think we start off with Giordano's because that's what we're trying to recreate. Let's see what they have on their website. Pizza. Ah, gotta spell it right. All right, here we go. How to make the perfect Chicago style pizza. The full recipe for their pizza is right on their website. This is gonna make it a lot easier, but let's jump in the kitchen and let's try and create Giordano's pizza in our home kitchen. So this dough recipe is gonna use all purpose flour. None of the double zero flour that we've used in the Neapolitan pizza or even the bread flour that we used in the New York style pizza, just regular old all purpose flour. Bit of cornmeal, salt, and a bit of white sugar. And then lastly, we're gonna use dry yeast. The recipe from Giordano's has a uh, measurement in teaspoons, so I'm gonna do it by teaspoons, even though I usually like doing it in grams. Gently whisk this all to combine everything. And let's set up our fan mixer. My dough hooks. And then put my bowl with dry ingredients in the bottom. Mixer on to low speed. And slowly drizzle in some warm water a bit of melted butter as well. We're gonna mix this together for about five minutes or until a dough starts to form. Our dough's been going for about five minutes. It's pulling away from the sides. Let's move on to the next step. I'm gonna lightly grease a mixing bowl. Put our dough inside. Gonna move it all around so everything gets coated in the oil. Now this recipe says to use tin foil or aluminum foil, so I'm gonna do that. We've been using plastic wrap so far. Let's see if it makes a difference. And I'm gonna leave this in a warm spot. This has been resting for almost two hours. We are ready to move on to the next step. I feel like based off of our other recipes, we should probably let this rest a little longer. It hasn't gotten as big as the other doughs, but let's stick to the recipe. Punch out the air, and I'm gonna roll this out onto a cutting board. Now I'm using a cutting board this time because we need to roll this into a large rectangle. Just a little bit of flour, and let's start rolling it out. Now I'm gonna spread about four tablespoons of butter all over this newly formed rectangle. That's probably about as good as that's getting with the amount of butter I had. Now starting at this end, I'm gonna roll it up, sort of like a log. Fold the other end over top, and then cut this down the middle. Got two roughly equal sized logs, form these into balls. And back in my bowl. A little surprised we're doing this in the same bowl, but what do I know? Cover with tin foil. And this time into the fridge for one hour. While our dough is rising in the fridge, we can start on our Chicago pizza sauce. Butter, olive oil, medium heat. I'm gonna add in some minced red onion, some dried oregano, some red pepper flakes, a pinch of salt, and some black pepper. I'm gonna cook this until the onion is softened. Once softened, I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic. Cook this for about a minute. I'm gonna add in a can of crushed tomatoes this time. And about a teaspoon of white sugar. Bring this to a simmer. Now that it's simmering, I'm gonna lower the heat. And we're gonna let this cook, reduce it by about half, 30 minutes or so. 
Okay, this has been going for about half an hour or so. It is thick and reduced. Turn off the heat, take it off. You can add in a bit of fresh chopped basil and another tablespoon or so of extra virgin olive oil. Stir that all around. And we can set this aside and check on our dough. So our dough spent another hour in the fridge. See what it looks like. Yeah, they definitely risen up a bit. Let's take one out. So I'm going to split this in half. Let's roll this piece out. This is called deep dish pizza, so I'm going to use a, well, deep dish. I've got a frying pan, a carbon steel uh, frying pan. Cast iron works really well as well. I'm gonna add just a thin layer of butter to the pan, which is gonna give me some color, but also help me get it out of here at the end. Just add our dough into the pan. Sort of moving it into the corners. So first I'm gonna add some mozzarella slices to the bottom. Let's rip these in half. And then some shredded mozzarella. This is an insane amount of cheese. So this is where you would add other um, toppings like uh, sausages or pepperoni. But what is apparently the Giordano's trick is we put another layer of dough right on top of this. Layer this on, pinch it closed. Sort of like if you were making a pie, you need some ventilation. So what they say is to rip five or six holes into this. Through it. Just gonna remove some of the extra dough. Now we're gonna add on the pizza sauce that we made. And if there wasn't enough cheese on this already, we're gonna sprinkle it with some Parmesan. And this is going in the oven for about half an hour. This cooked a little quicker, 23 minutes in the oven, but it's a little smaller than the recipe that I found on the internet. Okay, let's pull out a piece. And you can see the cheese is already sort of melting out the side. Getting some of that stretchy cheese. Let's give it a try. Really, really good. The crust is like a pie crust, I would say, than the pizza doughs that we've been making, but still incredibly good. Hope you enjoyed this recipe. Hope I got at least somewhat close to the Giordano's pizza. If you enjoyed this episode, hit the like button, subscribe to see more episodes. Aside from that, we'll see you in the next episode. Where's all that cheese? Look at that stretch.